What's up, air wreck? So we're talking liposuction today, fat transfer, BBLs, how to get that lower belly taken away without tummy tuck. And sorry for the uh, sorry for the censoring. We've been kicked off. We've been kicked off quite a few times from the censoring, so I apologize for that. Uh, if you have any questions as you're jumping on here, what's up, Coco? Uh, let's see. Okay, is it okay to get lipo when you have diabetes? It is. It is okay, but it is important that the diabetes is well controlled. The uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for your hemoglobin A1C prior to the prior to the procedure, and that's gonna get you to where you can. Uh, it shows how well your blood sugars have been controlled. So as long as you're well controlled, we can treat you. Diabetes, and in fact, any of the any any uh, disease process, you know, whether it's high blood pressure, diabetes, um, you know, whatever your issue is, as long as it's well controlled then you know we can go ahead and move forward with the procedure. She said, I want late lipo, but my liver enzymes have been elevated lately. Okay, Victoria. You know, you know obviously uh, you're aware of that, which means that you're trying to work on it. So, you know, the goal is once, it's, it's knowledge is power, right? Once you have the knowledge that you have an issue, it's just about working at it to get your, you know, your lab values back into a safe range. Okay, I wanna have lipo in my back uh, is where I have more fat. We can, we can take fat from anywhere you got it. You, you just produce the fat and we'll suck it off. <laughs> okay, what's the time frame for what's the time frame for recovery? Um, you know, our statistics show about 82% of patients are getting back to work within three to five days. Ooh, this is a big grande one, huh? <laughs> okay, so this is a good example of uh, what 360 lipo in a BBL is capable of. You know, not everybody has amazing potential like this, but this individual had, you know, unbelievable. You can take out that waistline and, and create this tiny little waist. And it was simply, she just had a big fat layer and she had a tiny little waist. It was already there. I just had to uncover it. So that's what's possible with lipo. My good friend, Audra. Audra is a previous patient. She's had a couple procedures. Um, and she's one of the people who's really transformed and changed her life uh, and gotten to the place where it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just liposuction. She doesn't rely on that. She takes care of herself. She eats the right food. She does the right thing. She's active. And more importantly, she's just a positive person. When you stay positive, positive things happen to you. Okay. If you guys have any questions, I'm here to answer them for you. This again is another 360 lipo. Let's see if I can move this back a little bit. Okay. It's, so, you know, some of those individuals, you know, we, we treat very, very large patients and we treat smaller patients. And you can see, you can go from kind of this boxy shape to this hourglass figure quite easily. You know, if you're, if you're close to it, it's so easy to get you there. You know, you're gonna see, I have a lot of pictures of very complex situations such as this. You know, Audra, she had, you know, a lot of fat in her belly and it went all over the place. She had loose skin, stretch marks, all kinds of things going on. And this is a picture about a week afterwards, kind of a progress photo here. Okay, I totally need this. Okay, Anna. So the first step is you're gonna to go to our website and get a quick quote, it's easy. You can get the pricing immediately while we're talking, myshapelipo.com. As you guys are jumping on here, make sure that you're liking the page and following us so you get the content uh, going forward. Um, okay, Preg, Prego, Pregi. Um, so you're asking about a thigh lift. We don't do thigh lifts. We don't do thigh lifts, but I'll show you what, uh, what we have for thighs. This is kind of a cool picture. This is an in between, this is like in the middle of the procedure showing what's possible, right? So we can remove large volumes of fat in your thighs to make you substantially smaller. Okay, and the, and the skin tightened up. You can see the skin's already tightened up. You know, obviously she has, it's gonna be loose at this point because the, it's in the middle of the procedure and we break up a lot of connective tissue, but that's what's possible. 
So, you know, when you're considering what you're getting, uh, I offer an alternative to those cutting procedures. So an alternative to the thigh lift, an alternative to the tummy tuck. You don't have to get those procedures. It's, it's your choice. And if you want to, that's cool. Okay, what about thigh lift? Okay, uh, does this help with uh, the, the hip dip? So someone wanted to see the hip dip, okay. So this you can see here, I hope, you know, you can see how the, you get this, uh, this dip right in through here. This is what you're talking about. And this was simply just liposuction. We didn't even add any volume here, but uh, the reason why these things form, it's a matter of, of gravity pulling in a certain way. So when you take away the volume that's, that's above, that's pushing down, causing the hip dip, then it, it uh, resolves the whole issue. It's, it's not that difficult, it really isn't. Um, do you do BBLs? Absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll be scrolling through here and you guys will see some stuff. You know, we got lots of different things. We got, we do BBLs, we do arms, we do chins, we do thighs, we do, you know, 360 lipo. It's all liposuction, no cutting, no, no, no tummy tuck, all liposuction. And it's all done under local anesthesia. We're located in Las Vegas. Okay, I need a lipo, how can I contact them? So up in our profile, My Shape Lipo, you can go to our website, myshapelipo.com. And the first thing, you, just to get pricing, it's simple. You know, you can go click on our quick quote. It's right on the, fr uh, the front of the homepage. Just click on the quick quote and uh, you can get your pricing immediately. Then when you're serious, you're ready to move forward. The next step is a formal consultation. On uh, Facebook, it says, um, have an anemia, can I? Do you like both? Yeah, so anemia is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's usually you've had some type of bleeding of sorts, and sometimes if you have heavy menstruation, you can get anemia from that. Uh, but, you know, anemia is something that we can help to resolve. And so typically if you're aware of it, you're conscious of it, then there's things that you can do to alleviate and uh, improve your, um, your profile. Okay. When you're going through TikTok, uh, I know you're doing TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. The question is about somebody's trying to get consultation, but what happens if no one answers? So the consultations, first of all, are just are the forms. You can go to our website and just just click on the link, and you can schedule a consultation uh, from the. It's, the, the, what you're looking for is a formal consultation, and we do charge for those. If, you, if you're just looking for the, you know, the, your first step is getting your pricing, and that would be the quick quote. Uh, but obviously you can call the office, um, but I know, you know, especially when we're on TikTok, the phone's blowing up. So, you know, just keep trying please. We, we really appreciate your support, so just, just keep trying. Um, do you do skin removal? We don't do any skin removal. Um, what if you have lost weight and already have sagging skin? You know, you'll see, you know, there's, there's a, we do very, very complicated situations here. I'm going to show you the pictures of people that are not easy, right? And it's not, this isn't easy stuff. And it's, and it's, they start with problems. So they come to me with problems. And when they come to me with problems, it's challenging, but for me, I've done thousands of these procedures and it is fun with the challenging procedures. So you can see these larger individuals that we can get out of the a significant amount of fat, make a big dramatic change. And there's no loose skin, check it out. You would think, this is because with the plastic surgeon, so you, you have to get a tummy tuck, right? But you would think you'd have an empty sack of skin like they tell you, but that that's not the truth. That's not the truth. When in fact, it, the skin tightens up quite well. And even on these, I'm showing you the complicated situations. So you realize that even if it's possible for these large people, then it's definitely possible for the smaller people. On Facebook, Barbara Shaw says, hi. Hey, what's up, Barbara? So Love Buns, Bunny says, I need a tummy tuck. You know, it's, it's, that's an opinion. If you believe that, then you'll go get it. Um, and you'll get the big scar and the expense that comes with it and the, t and the recovery. Um, and that, and, it's, and again, it's your choice and there's no, there's no, it's not good or bad, it just is. So you make the choice. We're just all offering an alternative to a tummy tuck. And if you want an alternative, this is a great option. What about inner thighs? We just went past some of those here, so I'll go back. So this is a, an older individual beforehand. So you can see this little bulge in the middle and take it away. Like everybody's different, what they need, what they want, they're different, their problems are different, but liposuction's the same. We're removing fat. This is another you know, interesting example. It just shows you, it's just removal of fat. When we remove the fat, the skin's gonna lay on whatever is underneath. So if you have an hourglass underneath, if you have, you know, if, you're, if your belly's bulging out underneath, and that's the way it's gonna be. You know, everybody's different. Okay, even if your BMI is uh, 45, yeah, yeah, we have some large, 
large patient. This one is pretty, this one was pretty big. Uh, we have some large individuals and uh, you know, if you go to our quick quote, we, have, we, we break right at the, uh, the BMI of 44. I require that you do um, a formal consultation at that point. And the reasoning behind that is as you get larger with the higher BMIs, the higher BMIs, they tend to put the fat in different areas. So it gets a little bit more complicated for me to give a, a generic quote. Well, Kathy on Facebook says she just wants a way to jump into healthier living. Uh -huh. And Terry, she says, my stomach is lumpy and a lot of loose skin of five months. Now I do everything possible. And she goes, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> she just wants to comment on something. Yeah. Uh, it says that I have a fibrous uh, solid tumor on my arms that I hate. Is that possible to have that removed? Um, I, you know, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, so I need to see that. I need to, you know, I de need to get a better understanding of what it is. Um, but I, you know, I can, obviously can't make any promise to you on this live. Uh, so if you're interested, you want me to try, I'm, I'm, I, look, I'm a, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm willing to try things and I'm, I'm aggressive and I've, and I have a ton of experience. So I feel very comfortable doing these procedures and doing these very complicated things. All right. We got somebody on YouTube. Nice. What's up YouTube? Uh, it's uh, Monica Rico. Hey, Monica. She, she asked, uh, "Do you transfer to the breast area?" We do. So fat transfer. So we, you know, we take the fat from one place and then we transfer it to another. And uh, typically, the most common area would be the, the fat transfer to the butt. Um, but we also tra fat transfer to the breast. And unfortunately, we're not able to show any pictures on any of these channels. Uh, we get censored, but. Uh, definitely, you know, it's definitely possible. And if any of you are really interested, please go visit our uh, private Facebook group and you can actually connect with our previous patients. A lot of the pictures you'll see behind me were posted by actual people and you can connect with them directly on our private Facebook group. So you go to Facebook and you search My Shape Life with Support Group and yeah, you can, you can ask them questions. Like these individuals, you can ask them questions and, you know, get the, get the truth. So this was actually a great example here. This young lady had a had liposuction previously. You can see her here in her lower belly. And this is the reason why I don't recommend treating the, only the lower belly. Because a lot of people come in and say, my problem is the lower belly, that's all I want treated. And, and this is what happens, this is what it looks like. And the problem is the blend. You see, they got aggressive down here, which is great, but they couldn't blend it well in to make it look natural. And you know, I gotta be honest, it's hard. It's really difficult to do that, which is why I have made it a, a recommendation that I always treat the entire abdomen. So just below the breast, all the way down to the pubic, everything. And if you do it that way, there's less blending. You, don't, you can go to natural endpoints. Right under the breast, there's a natural endpoint. All the way down to the pubic and the, and the, uh, the crease in the thigh, that's a natural endpoint. Uh, so we can go all the way down to that and clean it out and you can see the results. The results are awesome. So on Instagram, uh, Tiff Castro, 26, what is the time frame to go back to work after lipo? Uh, statistics say that uh, patients report being able to go back to sedentary type jobs within three to five days. Uh, Mel B, Mel B says, uh, I, ha I have, let's see, it does insurance cover and you have a diastasis recti. So diastasis recti is, uh, you know, I know you've probably been told that, but I think all my patients were told that and they're looking to avoid a tummy tuck. If you, if you want a tummy tuck, then you, know, you should go get a tummy tuck. And, and you, if you're gonna believe the things that they tell you, then, then you go do that. But you just gotta realize it's their opinion. And when you come to me, I'll have a different opinion. And clearly I get different results because I just have different beliefs. And, and I believe that it's possible to do liposuction only and get these results. And other doctors think that they need to cut the skin. And that's what they need to do to get the, the results that they like. So you know, it's whatever you want. If you want to avoid a tummy tuck, we can help you avoid a tummy tuck. And most of our patients, again, I have been told they have that and yet they still get a flat belly. But I don't know your situation, so we have to evaluate it. Um, what about fat transfer? Fat transfer is uh, take fat from one area and putting it into another. So we can take it around the waist and put it into the butt or take it around the waist and put it into the breast. Uh, arms, you wanna see some arm pictures. I got a couple of those. Okay, this is a, uh, an older lady, she was a smoker, she had loose skin, and yet you still see it tightens up. So this is meant to show you this again, it's a complicated situation. Um, she's older and she's a smoker, both of which are not boding well for, for the tightness of her skin. But despite that, the use of liposuction only 
and we use a smart lipo laser for skin tightening um, you can get tightening there i think i got another picture of the arms i'll, I'll show you guys we are you looking for that miss lip wilson says she knows somebody who had a mommy makeover uh -huh. and she's asking what's the chance of infection with this procedure so chance of infection with any procedure is always there. Uh, in fact, the studies have shown, you know, even with, uh, with sterile procedures in the OR, it, it, uh, infection occurs about 1% of the time. So you're talking one in 100 people. And you just never know when that, that, that one person is going to be. With liposuction, it's a, it is a, it's definitely a risk and it definitely occurs. And particularly because after the procedure, uh, the patients are wearing their garments and the garments um, may be rubbing on their wounds and if they rub on the wounds and it's perhaps it's hot and sweaty these are prime environments for bacteria so you just got to do the best that you can to protect the wounds and keep them clean and dry after these procedures so this is another picture of, uh, of arms here you can see this is obviously a more advanced case um, she had this uh, where the fat's muffining over her uh, her uh, bra and you see the arms are hanging and then afterwards you can see her triceps and that kind of cool how many procedures can you have in one visit it's it's all called one procedure it's, you're asking how much can you get done in one procedure uh, brandy and if you go check out our, our website myshapelipo.com we have a quick quote system and when you click on the quick quote uh, it asks you some basic questions and then there's there's a uh, uh, recommendations for someone your size I don't know what size you are so, so there's recommendations we have a safety protocol and uh, the recommendations have packages that I created the packages which would typically be the maximum amount amount we can do in one procedure and and the way that I create these is that I anticipate getting out at the maximum amount of fat that we're able to get out of one procedure for you and that, that's how we get these big dramatic change do you do specials absolutely you know Sometimes, you know, right, right now, just, you know, call our office. We got deals. Okay, I'm interested in getting my inner thighs. Cindy Rivera, awesome. Um, so first thing is go get that quick quote, call our office, and then you can also set, if you're ready to move forward, um, we can go ahead and do with our formal consultation. On is this Facebook, uh, Ozzy says she was told she needed a tummy tuck, uh -huh. and she just wants to thank you for a fluid opinion. Oh, cool. So, you know, tummy tucks, uh, you know, obviously no, I don't do a tummy tuck. So you're, you're, my recommendation and my uh, opinion is going to be that you don't need a tummy tuck. Um, but every, it's your choice, right? So I'm just here offering you alternatives. So liposuction can get you these results. They can get the fat to, to retract back. Look at this is a very, very large individual. Lots and lots of fat that we took off of her. And yet the skin still retracted back. And so I, I show these just as an example so you realize your potential, you have a ton of potential, but it, you, have to, you have to do the right things. So this procedure, it's, it's technique based. You're not gonna find these results with other doctors. I mean, maybe, uh, but I've spent 17 years and thousands and thousands of procedures uh, mastering my skills and my art of liposuction and, and being able to get this consistently. Oh man, everything's moving. <laughs> okay, if you had liposuction, okay, wait, hold on, I, I'm, let me go back a little bit further. Okay, we're located in Las Vegas. Doesn't the area get lipo get hard? It does afterwards. Um, that's natural, normal. It gets it's the we call it the lumpy bumpy phase because after you do liposuction, you're gonna get swollen, and the swelling gets uh, gets hard and condensed. Uh, but it's normal, it'll go away. It takes about, you know, sometimes a month, maybe even longer for that to go away. We are in Vegas. Um, if you have liposuction, do you still have to wear those drainage bags? We don't, we don't use any drains. Um, actually, our wounds are left open. They're tiny little puncture holes, two millimeter puncture holes. Um, they're left open on purpose so your body will drain the fluid and, and you'll drain significantly more that way, which is way better for you. The more fluid that gets out of you, the better. No drainage bags. Okay, are your MDs board certified? So it's just me, first of all, and I'm a PA, and I am board certified. But a PA, uh, you know, that I was able to get the experience. I started working in Beverly Hills, started doing liposuction out there, and I got I did thousands and thousands of procedures working on Rodeo Drive, very high profile. Um, got a lot of experience and then I decided that I wanted to stop being a slave for someone else and I opened my own business about 12 years ago 
So uh, I've had my shape lipo for about 12 years, and you know I've done over 15,000 procedures, and you know this is like I do this stuff in my sleep. Um, my hands just move. It's, it's just repetition. I, I do it. I do it. I do it. And, and if you believe that someone needs to have a piece of paper to, to say that they're good, um, then you should go to the people that have paper. Um, I have experience. That's what I got. And obviously, you know, it's legal for me to do all this stuff. I'm, you know, registered with the board. I have insurance. All the stuff that I have, I'm supposed to have. I have. And I've been doing this with my shape label for 12 years. So I'm, you know, everything's, everything's on par. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, my fear as I watch abdominal lipo getting um, perfed. How do you know when you are far enough in? Uh, it's technique based. And I'll tell you, so if you have the skin, as long as if you're, if you're aiming, if you're coming from this angle and you're aiming up towards the skin, then there's no way that you're going down, right? I mean, it's, it's simple, right? It's simple, it's easy. The other thing I do is I, is I pinch and I grab. So when I grab, I know my fingertips are where the muscle is and then I go in everything in this area right here. Okay? And it's, it's, just, it's simply technique, but it's super simple, super easy. I've never had a problem, never, never, not even close. In fact, you know, while you're awake, the advantage of being awake is that you can, um, if I start to get close to the muscle, you're gonna feel it and jump off the table. Even if I get close to it, you're gonna feel it because we only numb the fat layer, the, the bottom layer is not numbed, which is safety. Right? So if we go too deep, then you're gonna feel it and you're awake and you'll tell me and I'll stop before anything bad happens. We got a muscle question on Facebook. We're talking about muscle. Uh -huh. It's from Ozzy NWA Baby. Uh -huh. I was told my tummy is more muscle than fat after my firstborn and okay. she's three. And should I wait after having kids to do lipo? Um, so first of all, the should you wait to have kids before you get lipo? It makes absolutely no difference. My sister had full body lipo then had two kids afterwards. And she said that after she lost the weight after pregnancy, that she everything went back to the way it was. Um, so I, I don't think it makes any difference. We're talking about fat here, it's, and it, it has nothing to do with your pregnancy, nothing to do with your kids. Um, and it's not like, uh, you know, you may get stretch marks before lipo, you may get stretch marks after lipo with pregnancy. It just, it, that's, that is what it is, you know, it's your body. Uh, what is the heaviest person you perform lipo on? For example, would you do lipo on a 300 pound person? I have. Look, I've done pretty much everything that you can think of on every type of person, every body type, men, women, uh, gay, lesbian, men transitioning to women, women transitioning to men. Uh, I've done it all, I've seen it all. Every problem, I've seen you know, 350 pound people that have all kinds of weird stuff and you know, I, I manage it. I suck fat, so I just do the best that I can to get, get you back to normal. As much as, I, as much as normal means, right? We're located in Vegas. Yes, Chrissy, babe, we do fat transfers and it's most common to the breast and the butt. However, it's, it's possible to inject fat anywhere. Where are you? <laughs> we are uh, in Las Vegas. I'd like to apologize to Terry. She says, um, why aren't you answering all my questions? I just want to say that uh, we're trying to. Yeah. Your questions are coming fast and furious. Yes, okay. Do you rec recommend massages after lipo? Uh, yes, the lymphatic massages are great after lipo and they definitely help to uh, smooth everything out and they help with uh, drainage as well, and, as well as uh, swelling. How much is a tummy tuck? We don't do tummy tucks. These are all liposuction, only liposuction. And you can see this is actually one right here. You guys got to see this, how advanced this, the loose skin, the stretch marks and how bad that is. But then in the post up, you can see how well that skin tightens up despite all the damage. See, I show you the complicated stuff so you can see if you're not that complicated, then it's going to be like a layup for you. It's super easy. Okay, it's these complicated things that is challenging. You never know what to expect, but the easy people is easy peasy. Okay, insurance does not cover as far as I know. However, I've had some people that, that claim that they can get reimbursed. So if you wanna try and get reimbursed, you're welcome to do that, but you have to pay up front. No tummy tucks, lipo only. Cree words says a physician assistant, or you're not sure what a physician assistant, it's just a, it's a, it's a piece of paper. <laughs> That's all it is. And uh, it's, a, it's a degree, it's a schooling. Um, you know, PAs have the same rates as, as doctors. Um, there's, there's just, there are some specific limitations. Uh, and really the only limitation is that, you know, we need to have a supervising physician to sign charts. And so we have a, we actually have an emergency room doc, Dr. Roberts, that he oversees our practice. Um, but I'm the guy, I do the liposuction, I do it all. So the quick quote on the website isn't functioning. Dang it. Technology. Yeah, go check it. 
Yeah, I need lipo, how much? Um, well, I would send you to the quick quote, quote but apparently that's not working. <laughs> so be patient with us. You know, if you call our office too, the girls will help, they'll walk you through the pricing stuff too. Okay. Yes, physician assistant. And this, this PA figured out how to start his own business, how to get the experience of uh, doing over 15,000 liposuction procedures. Um, yeah, and this is all me. These are all my results. There's no other doctors, nobody else. I'm the man. This is it. Can you make payments on it before you come in? Absolutely. You, you have to be paid in full before the procedure. So um, we do have like layaway type plans where you make payments beforehand and then when you're paid in full, you can go ahead and move forward. Okay, are there any health issues? Of course there's health issues. This is a procedure. There's There's risks involved. So, you know, it's always possible that things happen. So the important thing is that we do everything in our power to avoid any risks. So we identify the risks prior to the procedure and then we try to avoid them as much as possible. Uh, and if you can do that, you know, you can, you can have a lot less problems. And that's why we started our private Facebook group. Get on the group. You can meet with uh, many of our previous patients. So as you get your procedure, you can talk to the older people, not the older people, but the more senior, I get, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not using the right words, but the people that have had their procedure previous, uh, they are there to work as, not work, but they're, they're there as your mentor, essentially. They're sharing their story and helping you out, answering your questions. Um, they're not our employees. Uh, so they're there sharing their stories. Okay, where did you learn the technique? I developed it myself. Over 15,000 procedures. You know, I, I'm, I'm all about mastery. So I have mastered my skill. And you know, to be honest with you, there are like weekend courses you can take on liposuction. In fact, I, I ran those, I teach doctors all the time, but uh, it's, it's, they teach you liposuction in a weekend course, which is total crap. You need repetition. You need to do this stuff thousands and thousands of times in order to get as good as I am. And, and it's like, like literally, I, I see everything with my hands and I've developed these extra sensory abilities to do this. Um, and I, I can't really explain, I can't put it into words, but when you're a patient, you'll understand what I'm saying. I have this like intuition, this ability to, to see and do. Uh, I can't really, it's hard to explain. Okay. He specializes in what he does. He's never had any deaths, so you'll be sure to be safe. Thank you. Okay, I've had hernia mesh surgery, lots of scar tissue. Can I still get this? Um, it is definitely possible. I have dealt with some extremely difficult scar tissue, extremely difficult, and stuff that like I wasn't able to handle. Um, but that was only one or two, and I've done a lot of them. Uh, so I've got a lot of really cool tricks over the years. I've figured it out. So again, I'm, this is mastery. I, nobody tells me how to do this stuff. I just make it up and I figure it out. And this is like, it's, I, I have an imagination. And if I can see in my mind how it can happen, then I can make it happen on your body. And it's just, I, I, you know, again, I can't, it's hard for me to explain this stuff, but I hope you guys understand. Okay, what kind of doctor are you? I'm a PA. I'm a PA. <laughs> Almost a doctor. <laughs> See, that's the bullshit that PAs deal with, right? <laughs> so we get this like we're like this, we're second class humans. We're only it's only a PA, but come on, guys. I mean, if you know a doctor that's done over fifteen thousand liposuction procedures and can can even hang with me, even possible, then I'd love to talk to them, and I want to see what degree they have. You know, the funny thing is, is uh, with especially with liposuction, people believe that plastic surgeons are you know board certified plastic surgeon, but the truth is, is this procedure was developed by it. Uh, a dermatologist, not a plastic surgeon. Plastic surgeons just picked it up. And they says, dude, this guy isn't even a doctor. Can't y'all tell? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, because I, I speak like a normal person and don't use these big words that you guys don't understand. I can use those big words if you don't, you know, but I don't, I choose not to do that. So Instagram is showing you some love. Hey. Hey, I want to ask, how long do you have to be in Las Vegas for this? Okay, so uh, you ha the recommendations are you come in the day before the procedure, so you make sure you get to the procedure on time, and then you're going to stay for two nights afterwards. And really the reasoning for that is because afterwards you're going to be draining a bunch of fluid, which is kind of messy, and traveling while you well, you're draining the fluid is, you know, it's an inconvenience. So we recommend two days, uh, let that fluid drain out of you, then, you'll, then you, you can go ahead and travel. Okay. Also on Instagram, they got here, and it says, uh, there's not enough respect for PAs or NPs. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, like I, I don't identify with the title. You guys can call me whatever the hell you want. That's, that's why I just people just call me Trevor because I don't identify with any of these 
titles. I, it doesn't really matter to me. And, and you know, like to be called a you know doctor or Mister or what, like it doesn't matter. I'm here to suck your fat out and change your life. That's what my mission is to change your life and to make your your life better. And if I can make your life better, you're gonna make your the life better for all the people around you. And it's like the ripple effect. So I'm just allow me to do my job and I'll change the world for you. Okay, are there any health issues? Please answer this for me. The health issues um, after these procedures, the major, it's not major, it's not even major, but the, the most common issues that you deal with would be infection. Um, so everybody gets antibiotics after the procedure to alleviate that and, and decrease the risk for infection. However, as you're healing, when you're wearing these compression garments, sometimes they can be sweaty, they can be rubbing, and so it's a high risk for infection from that standpoint. So it's important to keep your wounds clean and dry and protected. Okay, what if, you, what if from time to time you fill out a form until a procedure and you lose weight? Um, so once we, once we confirm everything with you, you know, in you know, you, you pay, like that's, that's it. You know, like we've, we've already agreed on the deal and that's what it is. Um, but if you, you know, lose weight before you come in for the consultation, then awesome, you know, good for you. But we're not doing procedures like six months out. We're doing procedures like a month out. You know, you wanna come in, I, I work fast. Like, I, like again, I, I do thousands of these procedures. So I work really, really fast. And because of that, I don't like to have a, a huge backlog. So we try to, we'll, when, we, when patients come in, we'll pack them in and uh, do a lot of procedures in a short period of time because that's, that's the way I can do it. And the faster I work, the, the, the easier it is for the patients. Uh, the longer you're on the table, the more challenging it is. Okay. What if from time to time, okay, now being board certified is what to focus on. PAs and doctors have to go through the same exact protocol. It is, it's, it's, it's funny. I mean. You know, I, I know that the, the people that are asking these things are just, they're just not educated on the whole, you know, medical training. Uh, but the, like we literally, as a PA, as we go and do, so our first two years of school are the same as medical school. I mean, so our first year, they condense all of the same, it's all of the same classes that they do in medical school in their first two years. So in one year, we condense it in their two years. So we do all of those, so it's like 24, 25 units uh, per semester, and we do three semesters. Uh, and that's, that's uh, our first year. The second year, and so medical school is two years of classroom work and two years of, of, uh, of internships. PA is one year of, of uh, schooling, but they pack two years of work into one year. And then the second year, they pack in two years of uh, internships into one year. And then we, we actually do our rotations with the medical students. It's all exactly the same training, exactly. So. These doctors that are telling you that you have to be board certified, it's just a, it's a marketing ploy. It's a sales ploy. Look at me, I'm better. I have a piece of paper. I have a trophy. I want, everybody says I'm great. I don't need that. What I need is for you, if you go to our private Facebook group, you can actually speak to the patients, the real people. Let them tell you. I mean, don't trust me. Let them tell you. Well, is, one of your actual patients is Rebecca Rexville. Hey, she says that Rebecca. She, she's on TikTok. Hey. Her name is... Enough, oh, oh, that's you making all the nice comments. <laughs> okay, how much does it cost? Um, the, the cost, everybody, you can get your, your pricing on our quick quote, and the quick quote is found on our website, myshapelifeo.com. Okay, let's see. What's the recovery time? Um, okay, yeah, the recovery time. So our statistics show that uh, about 82% of the patients claim, I'm sorry, with these pictures, I'm trying to move them while, while I'm talking, I'm getting distracted. Um, so the 80% uh, of our patients are able to get back to a sedentary type job within f three to five days is what they report. And then about 80% of the people said that within two weeks, they were able to get back to light gym workout. Okay, again, all, any of the cost stuff, you're gonna go to our website and uh, myshapelifeo.com and there's a quick quote there. It makes it really easy for you. I didn't know there was full body lipo. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's any part of your body that you have fat on, right? Um, and we literally, we do the chin, we do this buffalo hump back here, we do the, uh, the underarms, the back, forearm, I've done, not many people get forearms, but I have done some, like a, a few, like a handful of forearms. Uh, we do breast reduction with liposuction, we do underarm, we do upper back, we do the, obviously the full abdomen all the way around the waist, we do the lower back, uh, we, I can do reduction of the butt, or we can make the butt bigger with fat transfer. Um, we do legs, we do full thighs, it's, circumferential all the way around the thigh. The only part that we don't do is this little strip right by the uh, the hamstring. There's a big blood vessel I like to avoid down there. 
Okay, and then we have yep. Facebook, <laughs> finally. Yep. Uh, we have a, a, a former patient, and she wants to know what she to do with the uh, lumpiness in her skin. Okay, the lumpiness in the skin afterwards, everybody has a different, a different potential, right? So some of these individuals have very smooth skin beforehand, and they have better potential, and some of them have a, you know, a lot of, they have a lot of, you know, loose hanging skin marks, and their potential is obviously different. So, I got distracted. What was the question? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, there's so many questions. Let's relax, I know. relax. Take a deep breath. And remember, everybody, he is on four channels right now. Right, I'm trying. Four, four questions. So the questions are going to be uh, coming. This is from a former patient, and she thanks you for doing her yeah. procedure. And she just wants you to know uh, what it can I do for oh, lumpiness. Oh, the lumpiness. Okay, so there's a couple things that people do. Um, there are non-surgical treatments. Uh, we have one machine. It's called Venus Legacy. It's a radio frequency-based technology. But there's a couple other technologies out there, and it's something that you need to do on a regular basis. So if you're not local here in Vegas, there's probably somebody close to you that has that. Um, these the radio frequency at the higher temperatures, they can they can theoretically they call it melting the fat, um, but it's certainly not liposuction. It's not even close. Uh, so. You're gonna, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have like, if you have little lumpy bumps and stuff like that, or you have a little bit of looseness of skin, that's what it's good for. Um, it'll smooth smooth things out and it'll help tighten the skin. Okay, does insurance cover this? Uh, no, no, I, I, not that I know of. I think people have said that uh, they may be able to get reimbursed, but that's something that you gotta work on. You gotta pay, pay for the procedure first and then you can go ahead and work on getting re reimbursed. Why, why are the Google reviews so low? Well. I gave up on fake reviews a long time ago um, because I thought it was bullshit because uh, you know when they have, they have these third party companies come to you and they say, hey, you got negative reviews, do you wanna get them removed? And you're like, yeah, of course, right? And they said, well, we, can, we can't remove them, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, uh, re for every negative review, we're gonna make up 10 positive fake reviews that'll bury the negative ones. And I was like, that sounds so unethical, it's bullshit. And I can't, like, I just, I can't bring myself to, to be unethical like all these other people. So um, what I did is just, I just avoided the whole thing. And I created, I'm creative. So what I did is I created my own Facebook group where my previous patients can go there and share their story. And then you, when you're interested and want some real testimonials from real patients, go, go to our Facebook group and it's just private. So you got to get into it. So once you get in there, you can communicate and you can see all of our patients are sharing stuff. Um, we have patients as as late as uh, six days ago are sharing stuff, and then we have patients like Rebecca. She's like three, four years out. And we got other patients that are that are even you know eight to ten years out. Um, so you get a whole wide range of experience uh, on the Facebook group. And it's you know if you want if you want to read the fake reviews. I mean, look, uh, Google and Amazon are involved in major lawsuits right now because of fake reviews. I mean, you know, it's up to you. But that's what I did. If you want to talk to our real people, talk to the real patients. You know, the reviews, you can't, you don't even know who they are. They can hide behind a title or, or whatever they call it, you know, a fake name. You don't, you don't know if they're real or not. Okay, uh, Rebecca says, I was able to walk right out and was pretty self-sufficient back, back to work uh, day six. Thanks for sharing, Rebecca, you're awesome. Can you fly home after the procedure? Um, yeah, it's absolutely. In fact, about 80, 84% of our patients are flying in for their procedure, which means obviously that they fly out. Um, so you can fly in, and we typically recommend that you're gonna fly in the night before the procedure to make sure that you're not late and you show up on time for your procedure, then you're gonna stay for two days afterwards. It's ideal. And again, the, it's ideal just so you can, uh, you're gonna be draining a lot of fluid for the next few days after the procedure, particularly the first, uh, first two days so that's why we recommend staying for two days and then when you go travel again if you're not draining it's, it's a lot easier for you um, do you do a full body lipo yes just not all once and we break it up into multiple procedures is safety is, is of you know utmost importance to us um, is it safe at 57 yes Raisa uh, 57 it's just a number uh, we had a 74 year old lady who uh, came back for her fourth procedure earlier this month and in the past, she didn't drive herself this time, but in, in the past, she drove herself home, which we don't recommend that you do that. Uh, but the point is, this is you know, 74 year old, it's just a number. And when I, when I told her that people were asking if, if you know, in their 50s and 40s even, if, if they're too old for liposuction, I mean, it, it, she just started laughing because it's crazy. You guys act as if your life ends at a certain age. And, and obviously it does end at a certain time. All of, all of us are gonna end at a certain time, but you're not dead yet, okay? so. Even if you have five years left, 
wouldn't it be better to have five years left that you feel comfortable with yourself, you feel good, you're happy? So it's up to you, right? So on Instagram, Gladys says, if you have had breast augmentation, can you still get fat, fat transferred to the breast or do you have to remove the implants? Okay, if you've had implants, yes, and can you still get fat transferred to the breast? Correct. Okay. Um, yes, it is definitely possible. <clears throat> and typically when the individuals want uh, fat transfer when you've already had implants, it's usually because that, you know, maybe you were really skinny and the implants are, you can see like a, like a little balloon under your skin. And so you fill, I can fill in around the edges, which basically softens the edges and makes it look more natural. Um, so it's, it's actually really good for that. Uh, and it's, and again, the techniques are pretty simple. All of our instruments are blunt. Uh, but what we do is we, I just, I'm just going to push the implant out of the way and I, and I will only go into a space and I would never point towards the implant and you go, you know, parallel or away from it. Um, so it's just basic techniques to avoid having problems. Okay. How many patients uh, do you operate on a day? Um, it just depends on the day. I'll tell you, you know, when I, when I first got started doing this in Beverly Hills, they were working me like a mule and I was doing up to 10 procedures a day and I had a full team behind me uh, to prep the patient and, and I would just come in like the like the, the stallion and come in and just boom 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 knock out you know suck out the fat and, and go on to the next one it was a, it was a mill um, but I got a ton of experience in a really short period of time um, and that's not the way we do it anymore I, I don't I, I don't need to do that anymore uh, I don't need to work that hard so I like to I like to have you know three procedures in a day is is comfortable for me that's that's an easy day for me Okay, do you have to be a certain BMI? Um, we don't restrict based on BMI. We don't limit you based on your BMI. Uh, the BMI is a, is a way for us to tell what, your, um, what the volume of fat we would expect. So I see there's a comment here, um, Stephanie, regarding your BMI of 43. Um, yeah, you're, it's not a problem. Uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it's just it's, there's different recommendations. As you get bigger like that, there's different recommendations. So that's why if you see in our quick quote, our quick quote says, if you have a BMI over 44, then we, re we require a formal consultation. Well, the reasoning behind that is that uh, when you're bigger, the fat tends to go in all these weird places. And so your problems are different than someone that's smaller. So my recommendations are yeah, I, can't, I couldn't come up with any generic recommendations for people of BMI of 44 or above. So that's the reason. Can you give an idea of what the cost is since, since the quick quote, uh, quick tool is not available? Yeah, so the average average procedure is, is like four, I'm sorry, six to 8,000. And again, it just kind of depends on, on, obviously the larger individuals, there's more work, it's gonna be more expensive. Smaller individuals, it's less work and it's less expensive. Age limits, um, you know, this is kind of an ethical question. Uh, the age, I don't know, there's, I don't think there's any laws or anything about this stuff, but you know, typically we, you know, we're gonna say a minimum uh, of 18. However, I have in times done people under 18, but it's, it's, uh, it's really, the parents need to be highly involved and I gotta, I gotta connect with the story. Um, I've had a, a 16 year old from Canada, his mom, his mom was a previous patient of mine and she, uh, she told me that her son was depressed and and overweight and just felt like crap and didn't want to do anything and he was staying home never went out didn't have any friends and was very upset and she asked me to help him and you know she brought him down from Canada I interviewed him for like an hour we talked to him he's a very mature young man um, but he understood what he was getting himself into and he understood the complications and the risks and things of that nature so we, we removed a large volume of fat and his mom called me three months after and told me that he is now on the football team he has a girlfriend he has friends and he's you know he's living in normal life so for stories like that that's the stuff that that's like that's like soul work for me that makes me that makes me happy so if I can make people happy like that then then you know it's worth thinking about that's for sure how many patients do you operate in a day I think I already answered that okay you can give an idea of cost it's about six to eight thousand okay can a patient get lipo contouring with the uh, AICD Oh, for okay. Um, I forgot what that stands for. <laughs> but uh, so you have an arrhythmia. Yeah, so is, is, it, is it like a, a pacemaker? Is that what that is? Um, so the, there's protocols for those type of things, I believe. So we would have to work with your cardiologist and just figure out what the right protocol is for you and, and take whatever precautions we need to make sure it's safe for you. No age limit. Depends on your health. You got to be healthy. If you have fat and you're healthy, it's good for you. 
Okay. How much drainage do you have after the first two days? Uh, you know, everyone's different, so there's no there's no like there's no solid answer for any of this stuff. You know, with with the recovery process, some people swell a whole lot, some people don't. Some people drain a whole lot, some people don't. Some people have a lot of discomfort afterwards. Some people it's a piece of cake. Uh, it's it's literally it's all over the board. Uh, but check with our group. If you go to the private Facebook group, you can actually talk to these patients and, and you, can get, you can see how all over the board it is. Because some people were like, ah, it was a piece of cake, no problem. I walked out of there smiling and, you know, went to lunch right afterwards. And other people were like, oh, it was the worst thing ever. You know, I just do, I do the same thing on everybody and it's just a matter of how people tolerate things. Okay, can I get lipo after five months post-op of regular lipo? Um, it, you know, I guess the recommendation is six months, but five months, you know, it's, it's, just a, it's just a recommendation. There's no law, right? So the reason why we ask or we recommend six months is that because you're going to have an inflammatory response. You'll have swelling from the previous lipo, and that swelling can inhibit us from doing what we need to do for the future lipo. Now, obviously, if you're trying to get it in the same place, same area, then it means that they probably didn't get out enough fat the first time, and which bodes really well for you. Um, if they didn't get out enough fat the first time, phew, that's, a, that's a really easy procedure for me. I can just go in, suck the fat out, and wham, bam, you're done. All right, we have a Facebook question. Yes. Hi, I have a BMI over 45. Is this okay? I've been going back and forth between get, either getting a, a lipo or a tummy tuck. Okay. Um, well, first of all, they're not going to do a tummy tuck on you. You're too big. Uh, so whoever you talk to, I promise you, they're going to tell you you have to have a BMI under under 42 or something like or 32. Uh, but liposuction is fat removal, so we can remove a bunch of fat, and in most cases the skin's going to retract back quite nicely. And as it retracts back, I'm going to see if I can get a larger individual, just so you can see that one again. I'm not sure exactly what her BMI is, but it's pretty freaking high. She's a big girl, okay. And it's possible, look, we can get a large amount of fat off of you. And, and I, you know, I, honestly, with her, you can see she still has a little remnants of a fold down there, but she's also only three weeks out and very swollen still. So I would anticipate that that fold is going to go away completely and she's not going to need a tummy tuck. And you likely won't need a tummy tuck either. It's, I know it sounds, I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds impossible. I think so too. When I see this stuff, then they come into my office, I'm like, oh my God, this is impossible. And then I, my hands just do, I just do. I stop thinking, I stop thinking and anticipating and wondering what if, what if, what if, I just do. It's, it's, but it's not, it's not like I'm thinking about this stuff. It's all repetition, it's all repetition. I just do it over and over and over and I'm able to do this consistently. What's the difference between smart lipo and regular lipo? Smart lipo is simply a brand name of a laser and it's used for skin tightening. Uh, regular lipo, uh, I mean, it's, it's not, nobody does regular lipo or old lipo anymore. It's, it's all, uh, you know, minimally invasive. We use small instrumentation. Everybody does. So anybody that's telling you they're comparing themselves to regular lipo, it's a, it's a marketing ploy. Um, so don't believe it. Everybody does the same stuff. Now there's different instrumentation and they, they'll, they'll try to say that just like, just like the plastic surgeons try to say that their paper makes them better. Uh, there, there's doctors that'll say that their instrumentation makes them better and it's total crap. You can put any instrument in, in any instrument in my hand that, that sucks out fat and I will make magic happen on you. It doesn't really matter at all. The instrumentation doesn't matter at all. It might make it a little bit easier. I have my preferences on the instrumentation that I like and I like the ones that I like, um, but I've tried a bunch of them and I still get awesome results. Um, it's just a matter of whether I like the instrumentation. Okay, where are we located? We're in Vegas. Your husband would love to come. <laughs> what are the risks of, uh, with fibromyalgia? You know, fibromyalgia is obviously, it's a interesting diagnosis. It's a diagnosis of exclusion. So they're basically telling you, we don't know what the hell is wrong with you, so we're gonna give you this diagnosis so you feel better about something. Um, it's a weird diagnosis, they really don't know. Um, so I, I can't tell you a whole lot about it. However, I have had quite a few patients that have had fibromyalgia, and afterwards, what I know is that with fibromyalgia, sometimes you can get flare-ups and things like that. So that is possible. You have to understand the risk that you're getting yourself into. Um, however, I've had some weird stuff that was actually very positive. Um, with these fibromyalgia patients, they afterwards, they, they claim that some of their pains have gone away. 
I don't know how, I don't know what it does, but this it's, it's possible. I've also seen a lot of other weird things with your health, like it's going to lower your blood pressure. This, this, is, this is shown in studies, but it also uh, it, it decreases your, um, your blood sugar, um, like the way that your blood sugar works and for your diabetic profile. Uh, so it'll improve that dramatically, especially when we remove large volumes of fat like this. It makes a big change in your health, that is. And obviously, <laughs> physically. Okay, I wish I would have gone to you, Teresa. See, I'm, right? These these uh, these traps that they tell you that you have to get a tummy tuck, or you know you have to do a weight loss surgery. Or, you know they just they don't give you any any other options because it's their opinion. It's one person's opinion. I'll tell you, if you ask ten doctors, they're gonna get ten different opinions. That's just the way it is because their opinion is based off of their experience of what they believe they can do to make make you know solve your problem. And so without the experience of doing stuff like this, the doctors would never recommend it because they can't do it, right? I mean, it's gotta make sense to you. I've had patients that come to me and they say, oh, the last doctor I went to a consultation said they couldn't, it was impossible to do arms. And I'm like, what, <laughs> impossible? It was just, they don't do the arms because they don't know how to do it. So they, they, they tell the patients that you can't do it or they'll tell you that it's dangerous or they'll, tell, they'll make up whatever bullshit story they have to make up in order to make themselves look good. And it is what it is, right? <laughs> you know? Okay, is there any discounts um, to lock in price for Labor Day? You know, I haven't, I haven't come up with any, anything yet, um, but that's not a bad idea. So, you know, start the process and you know, we'll work on something. We'll get something, we'll, we'll get something for you guys. You guys want 15% off? I'll give you 15% off on today. The people that, that see, you gotta hear it today. You gotta tell the girls, right? So the girls aren't even gonna know about it. They're gonna say, hey, they told me that you said something that, that we can get 15% off uh, during your live on TikTok. Uh, is that true? So this is what the girls have to do. So you have to call them and, and ask them about it. So I'll give you 15% off. You gotta call and ask about it. Give them a code, like a secret message. Trevor's awesome. <laughs> you gotta say that, right? Yeah, you gotta say Trevor's awesome. Then they won't believe you. <laughs> Is there any discount? Okay, uh, what are the risks um, of a diabetic? So obviously, you you know, if you're diabetic, you understand diabetics are slow healers um, in general. And if your blood sugars are not controlled, it's gonna be even worse. So we definitely will do a hemoglobin A1C, which is a lab, and that's gonna tell us um, how well your blood sugars have been controlled over the past few months. And as long as that is, and so, and, and this is not me saying this, this is like the, the guidelines. And so they, they say, as long as your, as your hemoglobin A1C is below a certain level, that it's safe. Now, is it really safe? I don't know. Um, diabetics, have a, they struggle right um but i can tell you the cool thing is is that having this procedure is going to make your diabetic stuff a lot easier um, and it may make it so you can lower your blood pressure i mean your your diabetic medication which would be awesome that's really the goal and that's why that's why we take these risks you know we take these risks you know most people are saying because they're looking for the cosmetic results but i'll tell you these larger individuals it's about um it's about health it's about getting yourself in a position where you can live longer and you can live a better life to where you can, you can do the things that you want to do. So Instagram, yes. we have two questions. Uh -huh. uh, do I have to drop pounds before having this procedure? And once again, what's the downtime? Okay, so we don't require, can you grab my water over there please? We don't require um, that you lose weight. You can see we have very large people. Now obviously if you want to lose weight, I always recommend that you, uh, you live a healthy lifestyle after the procedure. So start losing weight now get the procedure and continue to lose weight. And it gets way better. Everything gets better when you lose weight. You get more energy, you look better, you feel better, the results get better. Just keep going, keep improving. And if you do that, you're gonna see in like a couple years after you've been improving on a daily basis, you're gonna see in a couple years that your whole life is different. And, and you, you're like a rock star. And you'll see that if you go um, follow our patients on the group, you can see there's quite a few of them have have reached this what I call rock star status and they're just, just badass. It's been like two, three years for some of these girls and they just keep going, keep improving, keep working out, keep eating right. And it's like constant improvement and they're getting better. And it's the happiest of smiles. You see smiles all the time. You see they're going out, they're doing things that they've never done before. They're wearing clothes that they never wore before. And that's what it's all about. It's about living your life. It's about living your life. And if you have the confidence to live your life, life is awesome. 
Okay, what about excess skin? Well, you can see here, I mean, this is, this is how, just on arms, how well the skin tightens up. If you, if you follow around, you can see, I mean, it's the same thing. It's, this is liposuction. We take the fat out and then we utilize the uh, smart lipo laser for skin tightening when it's uh, appropriate. And, but the skin retracts back. It's a, it's, a lot of this is the techniques that I've developed over the years. Um, and, it's, and it's something, again, I've, I didn't get these results early on. I'll, I'll be honest with you. And so it, it takes a lot of work to understand how to get this. And I've tried to teach people how to do this and it, it hasn't worked. Um, so I, I haven't been able to get any other doctors to do this the way that I do it. Um, and despite, I've, tried, I've probably trained over 100 doctors, but it's like, it's like short time training. It's stupid how they do training in this, in this uh, industry. I was trying to change that, but I, you know, there's only so much I can do. Okay, where are we located? We're in Vegas. Um, ever done lipedema? Yeah, I have actually. Um, lipedema is a it's challenge. Let me get some water first. So lipedema is one of those things that it sucks, right? And it's a consequence of something. Because something's going on to cause it. And it's uh, lipedema is like swelling, so you're getting fluid around the fat. And so with liposuction, if you read the studies, the studies say that with liposuction, you can get, uh, you can, you can definitely get that out. Um, the question is, does it reoccur? And it's, the studies have shown that approximately, the stuff that I've read at least, excuse me, about 50% of the time it reoccurs. Okay. Is there any discount for Glaberty? Did I, I think I already read that. And I told you guys, if you, if you mentioned today that I said that I because they're going to call me and ask me like did you say something something so and and then the the code word is you got to tell them trevor's awesome <laughs> we're located in vegas okay okay does having an ostomy make it impossible nothing is an impossible nothing is an impossible you just have to be creative um you know your ostomy bag um we just need to avoid it. And so when you have an understanding of the anatomy and understanding of how these things work, it's, it's easy to avoid these things. Um, but you have, to, you have to understand what the risks are and the potential complications, and then you have to accept that stuff moving forward. Because, and, and I'm, willing to, I'm willing to try things, um, and I'm, I'll explain exactly how I'm gonna do it, and, and uh, I'm willing to try. However, you just need to understand the potential risk because, you know, I, you know, essentially I take the risk to do, to help you. But the reality is, is this, the patient is taking the risk and you have to do it. And it's, it is, it's, you just got to realize that it's like, I'm not the one that, that lives with the consequences of, of what happens with these procedures. Um, I get to see the joy and the happiness. That's awesome. Uh, but when things don't go right, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you have to live with it. Okay. He has a quick course course. Yeah. Okay. Do you have an ostomy? Um, make it just okay I think I already answered that how much um, any of the pricing questions um, I'm gonna send you to our website uh, go, go to myshapelipo.com and we have a quick quote there I understand it may not be working is it working have you checked it it's working. okay I understand it's working now so you can go to our website myshapelipo.com and you get our quick quote and you get the instant pricing right now um, you don't need a consultation okay where are the risks what are the risks I think I already answered that fibromyalgia question how soon can you fly after the procedure um, so you can fly, I mean, technically you can fly right afterwards, but you're going to be draining this fluid. So it's messy and inconvenient. So I don't recommend flying right afterwards. Uh, I would recommend flying two days afterwards. And anytime you travel, uh, you're going to have a, a potential risk of blood clots. So the risk after any procedure, it's a blood clot is a potential risk and it's, but they tend to occur when you are sedentary. And so after these procedures, if you like, if you're sitting in a car for an extended period of time, that's a major risk. If you're on an airplane and you're not getting up to walk around, that's a risk. So when you do these things, if you like say when you're traveling, you have to travel. If you decide to drive, that's fine. Stop, walk, do the, the, the I call it the Chinese fire drill. Get out and walk around the car. That's it. Get back in and keep on going. Also, while you're in the car, you can squeeze your calves because the way the blood gets back to your heart is through venous blood and there's no pumping. The, blood, the, the heart pumps the blood out, but to get back to you, it's compression of the, uh, the muscles. So the muscles push the blood vessels, pushes the blood. So if you massage the calf area, it'll push the blood back up and you have a much lower incidence of uh, blood clots. Instagram says, can I get arms and belly done at the same time? 
arms and belly. Um, it's it's theoretically it's possible. I, I don't like to jump around. I like to see like the belly typically is one major problem. And so I like to address one major problem at, at a time and do the best job that I can do there instead of jumping all around. Um, it's, it's usually my people from out of state that are coming in they're like, oh, I want full body lipo or they want one area here, one area here, one area there and one area there. And it's like this like taking ice cream scoops out of all these areas. But the truth is that the areas, if the problem is a lot bigger, it, we need to address the whole problem in order to get these kind of results. You know, I can't promise results if you don't go with my recommendations, right? But it's something I'll talk about. Like I'm flexible, I'm creative, I can do this. I've done lots of these procedures, so I can, I can do anything. So do you recommend the foam and the boards? Yeah, yeah we actually give foam to our patients um, afterwards. So we're gonna supply the Garmin, give you supplies uh, for the, ne the first few days after your procedure. And we're gonna give you foam. Um, so that'll help with the uh, keeping things smooth and even. And the lipo board is a tool. Okay, I fly day four, back to work day six. Oh, that was uh, Rebecca, okay. Rebecca's just sharing her story. Okay, real review, they're posted in the group. Absolutely, thanks for sharing that, Rebecca. What's up, Domina? Okay, Cali girl says, I have FM and not this surgery, but uh, had two others. I always double recovery time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, do you have before and after pics? So any of you who want before and after pics, um, like a Rebecca, for example, if you go follow our private Facebook group, she is there and all of her pictures. I mean, she's been posting pictures for years. Um, so there's lots of them. Uh, but a lot of these other girls that you see behind me, they're there as well, and they're sharing pictures, and they're sharing lots of them. And, and you know, these are the pictures that, like, we call this censoring stuff because TikTok doesn't like, and, uh, you know, the social media, they don't like to see skin. So we got to keep this moving. we got to keep, you know, covering stuff up. So I apologize for the censoring. It's just part of the game. Okay, what is this I just joined? It's liposuction only, no tummy tuck, all under local anesthesia. We're located in Vegas. Pricing you can get on our website, myshapelipo.com. We do a quick quote. We can get an easy, instant quote immediately. And it's safe. <laughs> that was the rundown. Okay. Oh, no. Sorry, I'm going to miss a few of these. All right, Instagram says, uh, do yeah. you do fat transfer as well? Yeah, fat transfer, of course. <laughs> Okay, they're posting this. Uh, this the, the code is Trevor is awesome. <laughs> okay, BMI in the 50s, is it okay? It's possible, you know, this is why, you know, you just never know. I gotta look at the see When you get over, over the BMI of 45, all, like all bets are off. I can't promise anything. Uh, but I can tell you, I just, I just like last, last uh, it was like two weeks ago, I worked on some lady, she was, a, she was a BMI of 50 and we were able to help her out. So I developed the plan and if you agree, to the plan and it's and it's okay for you and you agree agree to the risks and everything's good then and you're healthy we can go ahead and move forward and, and i remove lots of fat we you can see we make big changes so if you're a big person we make some big changes don't worry what's up amina amina in vegas is it safe to do you know safe is like if, if, is it safe to cross the street you can get hit by a car you know this this is a procedure there are limitations there's risks there's potential complications so there is potential risk that you need to just be aware of. And it's not about, you know, it's not about getting scared about this stuff, it's about being prepared about this stuff. So if you understand and know what the risks are, you can, you can do things to alleviate the risks. Okay, what if you have G6PD? Ah, oh, that sounds so familiar, um, but I don't remember. I do liposuction, I'm not an internist. Uh, but if you have issues, any of these issues that you have that I don't, I'm not aware of, we're gonna we're gonna end up consulting with your with your treating physician, whoever it is, if it's your primary treating physician or you have a specialist, we're gonna consult with them and get their opinion. Um, and usually there's a protocol for patients to go through procedures, so uh, we will you know go through whatever pr protocol is necessary. Um, can I do this with a low iron? Yeah, absolutely. Um, typically, if you have low iron, you're gonna have low blood levels as well, though. So we just need to make sure that your blood levels are proper. And that's what we do with the uh, with the, the, the lab value. So when you when you schedule your procedure, we're gonna get the labs and get you medically cleared. Instagram says lipo doesn't mess up your career. Period.
That's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, when we take out large volumes of fat, it, it affects your hormones somehow. I'm not exactly sure how this stuff works. I just take out the fat and then I see the results. And patients have told me that uh, it, it affects their hormones and it affects their period. Um, I, in fact, I had this one girl that had um, oh, PCOS. Um, it was one of those female problems. And she said she never had uh, or she hadn't, she hadn't had her period more than twice a year for the past 10 years. And immediately after liposuction, the first month after liposuction, she started getting it and it's been regular ever since. And that's clearly related to hormones. And again, I don't know how this stuff works. I just suck out the fat and then I get these awesome stories. So, you know, if you have these issues, it's, it's possible that liposuction could help. You know, it's just kind of like a, you know, roll the dice. You can, you can look good and then maybe it helps you, it helps you in your, your complicated issues. Okay, removing visceral fat is helpful for diabetics. Absolutely it is, but we can't do it with liposuction. The visceral fat is that fat behind the muscle. So all of us have um, fat surrounding our internal organs and that's called visceral fat, that's behind the muscle. And with that fat, it's, it's more common on men. And uh, you'll see how, how they bulge out and they get these, and we call it beer bellies. And then when you touch their belly, it's, it's hanging which means that it's loose and it's external, it's outside of that muscle, which is why she got the results that she got because she doesn't have the visceral fat. I'm sure she has some, but just not enough to make her belly bulge out. And all the patients, this is all local anesthesia while you're awake. Safest, most cost-effective way of doing the procedure. Okay, what's the procedure you're talking about? We're talking about liposuction, liposuction fat transfer. So we take it out and put it in. Uh, this all can, is done under local anesthesia while you're awake. We're located in Las Vegas. Any of your pricing questions, you can go check out our website, myshapelipo.com. We have an easy, quick quote system where you just click on the link, you put some basic information, you can get an instant quote. No need for a consultation until you're ready. When you're ready, then you do your formal consultation. Gloria, what's up? Had my lipo done and belly done. Breast as well. Yep. Good times. See, you know, I'm, I'm always flattered when my previous patients come on to these lives and share their stories because they certainly don't have to. You know, they go, they usually when they're happy, you go about your life, but they keep coming back, which is an indication that I'm doing something right. Not only that, our biggest source of business is referral business and repeat business. And when I say repeat business, it's not that they're coming back to get lipo in the same area. It's that they're getting lipo in all the other areas of their body. You know, so once you see how awesome this is, you're like, I want more. <laughs> like, why not? Okay, I just went to Facebook. Do you have to wait for someone to accept the request? Yes, you do. That's actually Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca's right here on TikTok. So maybe, Rebecca, you can jump on over there really quick and accept her. <laughs> do you recommend foam and boards? Yes, we do. Okay, I just joined. Okay, how long do you wear the girdle? Um, that's kind of all over the board, too. Some of our patients are wearing it, you know, you got to realize the compression garments are for uh, swelling. So if you have swelling, you're going to wear the compression gar garment longer. If you don't feel you have swelling anymore, then you don't have to wear the garment anymore. Now, some things you'll find typically towards the, the latter end of the healing process is you take the garment off and then you swell up throughout the day. And then some, so, so for that reason, some girls will wear the garments at night. And then eventually your body, it's a process. Your body has to, has to accommodate all these things and it has to do what the body's gotta do. I don't make it do this stuff. Some people heal slower than others. I, you know, I just suck the fat out and, and, you know, and we get these results. But it, it is a process, I mean, it is the journey. We, we use these words on purpose because you have to realize that it's not like just go get your, fu your, your fat sucked out and, you, and your magic happens. It's a process. You get the fat sucked out and you got a recovery process. Okay, no tummy tucks. Okay, do you take uh, lipedema patients? Uh, you know, I'll help you out. You know, and you know, I, and I'll tell you the same thing I, I said earlier is that lipedema. My understanding, and I've done quite a few of them, um, but they haven't followed up very well. So I don't know any long-term uh, benefits for my patients from lipedema. Uh, however, the uh, studies have shown that lipedema reoccurs about 50% of the time. Um, but if it's if you had a really difficult situation and you're kind of at your else you're not what not sure what else to do then it maybe it's probably worth trying but it, it just depends on where you are in the process okay how do you feel about massages after the surgery yeah, absolutely they're great okay where are you located we're in vegas how much does it cost 
Um, for all the cost questions, you can go to our website, myshapelipo.com, and we have our quick quote system where you can enter your information and get a quote, and you can do it right now while we're speaking. Is this before and after? Yeah, all of these are. <laughs> and this is holding your fat afterwards. And each of these bottles are two liters. And you know, you can see this is just pure fat. It's beautiful, beautiful. And not only do we do big people, but we do small people as well. And you can see how with this individual, she's she just taking a, out a little bit of fat in that waistline, snatches that waist. Just adding a little bit of fat in that butt makes that booty pop. This is what's possible. Smaller people, right? This is an older lady. She's got uh, hanging arms. Louis, she's in her 60s. And uh, you can still see the skin tightens up quite nicely. Usually, how long do you have to stop nursing to get, uh, to get lipo? Um, so, see, pregnancy is a challenging thing. You've got lots of hormones that are circ circulating through your body. Um, also, when you're nursing, so when you're breastfeeding, uh, it's, it messes with your hormones and I'm sure you girls notice all the, all the weird stuff like your hair falls out and weird, you know, there's, there's weird things that happen and it's all hormonal. So it is recommended to wait at least six months after you've, you're done breastfeeding. And I, and I tell you from my personal experience, I, you know, I, and I do push the limits. I always push the limits. That's just in my nature. Um, so I've tried it earlier and it hasn't worked out great. And so because of that, I now recommend, you know, waiting at least to six months. Um, and what happened was it's, it's on, it was on two, two different individuals and the fat was very difficult to come out. Um, and, and the only thing I could attribute it to was, was the pregnancy or the hormones. So see, I have a lap band. Do I have to get it removed first? No way. No, you're, that's good, man. You did a good job. I hope you lost a bunch of weight. Uh, the lap band, usually there's a little nodule we can feel. I just stay away from it. Okay, what's the procedure? It's liposuction. What if you smoke? Man, if you don't know that smoking is bad for you at this point, uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, smoking is bad for you. It's just, it makes you heal slower. Um, you're, you're gonna have a much higher risk for complications, much higher risk for infections, uh, <clears throat> and you're probably gonna have more issues with swelling and bruising and everything else. 15% off, you gotta call the office and mention the code, Trevor is awesome. 15% off, this, you're only gonna hear it here, I'm not gonna advertise it, so you guys are special. All right, on Facebook it says, can you work around scar tissue? I had a huge gallbladder surgery and my scar is massive. Yes, scars, we've dealt with lots and lots of scars. Um, now, some of them, and here's the problem, when they have adhesions and they, and they pucker, and so sometimes the adhesions are all the way down to the muscle. So it depends how it was repaired. So when they, when they sew, sew you back up, they're supposed to sew you up in different layers. However, some of the doctors don't do that. They sew it all the way down to the muscle layer. Then when you get bigger, so you may have had the surgery when you're smaller and then it was flat at that point, but then you gain weight and the adhesions cause it to pucker and to buckle up. So what I do is I go in there and I unroof the, the scar tissue here and it allows it to lay flat. And then I take the fat on both sides and again, it lays flat. Now, sometimes if the adhesions are too deep and too extensive, I'm not able to release them properly. Um, however, the breaking up of the fat on both sides is still, is still really good and it still gets good results. Okay, do you do all the clearance tests in office and are they included in your price? So we don't do the clearance tests, it's a lab test. And since most of our patients are flying in from out of state, you know, it's not in our office and we need to get these done beforehand. And, and it is an additional cost. It's about a hundred bucks to get your labs done. And that's to, that's to make sure it's safe for you. Um, so what we do with that, we, as soon as you schedule the procedure, we're gonna email you the, uh, the order and then this, uh, the company that we have contracted with, the, they have deals with like LabCorp. So you just go to a local LabCorp. So if you, if you live near a hospital, there's gonna be a LabCorp there. Uh, so you just get the labs and then they, they automatically send it to us. Okay, it says request pending. Okay, then no, we'll be patient. Okay, what if we have anemia? Um, then we do the best that we can to uh, resolve the anemia before. Um, yeah, it's usually with iron or other supplementation. Um, also, you want to be highly hydrated. So you come in, you're drinking plenty and plenty of water, lots and lots of water. Um, when we remove large volumes of fat afterwards, the patients tend to be dehydrated. Um, so it's almost as if the, the volume of fat is like a fluid of water. So when we take it out of there, you may 
you may experience lightheadedness and dizziness. So if you drink more water, you get less problems. What does it mean if you have constant bloating? You know, someone asked me about this, um, the bloating thing. It's probably, you're probably making some comments. Um, the, the bloating, uh, you know, if it's fat, then I suck it out. If it's not fat, then I, you know, it's not my territory. And so if the bloating is from your bowels, for example, like if you have some type of inflammatory disease in your bowel, like IBS or something of that nature that's causing the bloating and it's behind the muscle, then it's, you know, there's nothing that I can do. Um, however, if you have that loose jiggly fat on the outside, that's the stuff I can get. And I can get all of it. Well, not all of it, I get most of it. Okay, do you recommend foams and boards? Yes, we do. Foams and boards are awesome. We actually provide foam after the procedure. I'm, lo I'm local, so glad I found you. Awesome, Andrea. Okay, Lucretia, what's up? Thank you for telling me your real name. I got all these like weird, weird names here. <laughs> okay, the My Shape Lipo Support Group is awesome. Okay, why does a tummy tuck cause um, a fat ring? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I've never heard it referred to as a fat ring. Um, the tummy tuck, they typically don't do enough liposuction, so you're not gonna get the same results um, with the tummy tuck as you would with liposuction. It's just totally different. Uh, tummy tuck is a removal of skin, and they may charge, I guarantee you they will charge you for liposuction, but they certainly do not do enough. Um, so people who have a tummy tuck, you're usually left square. And so you would have a square shape and then, you know, you come back for liposuction and we can create these hourglass figures. But my recommendation is, is get liposuction first. The skin retracts back always. It always does. And if that's, if that's good enough for you, then you're done. You don't need to do any tummy tuck. No, you know, cost or recovery and you just move on with your life. You know, live the good life. Okay. Say the website again. It's just like the name of the of the uh, the page here, myshapelipo.com. Okay, can you request specific body body measurements to have after surgery? Wow, that would be awesome. I'm just not that good. <laughs> you know, that, that's I, I do my I do my thing, and and you know, it's it's you have what you have already. All I'm doing is taking the fat off. And if you have a small waist, and some, in fact, you'll see some of the people it cinches down super nice for them because they have it, that's what they have. But some people don't have that. So all I do is take the fat out and whatever's there is there. Um, you know, I can't change some things. I can, I can change some things, but I can't change all things. Um, I have some control, but I don't have all control. Okay, what is it like during recovery for kids, one mom? Um, so four kids, one mom, I get it. Okay, um, the recovery process is, uh, it, for, for some people it's a breeze, it's really easy, and other people it's really challenging. Uh, but if you, go, if you go check out our group, if you're serious, you're, you know, you, you're interested in this, go, go check out our private Facebook group. My Shape Lapo Support Group is on Facebook, and we have our previous patients that are there, and so there's plenty of moms. Uh, plenty of moms, four, you know, four kids is, is not even that many. We have plenty of women that have like six, seven, eight kids. Um, so. They can, they can definitely share with you their, their experience, um, mothers that had little kids, babies at the time, um, so they can share their experience of how difficult it was or how easy it was, whatever. Okay. On Instagram, huh? can lipo be done even if there is loose skin on the stomach area? Yes, yes it can. So um, if there is fat, so here's the key, if you only have loose skin, then cutting the skin away might make sense to you. If you have fat and loose skin, then, it sh then you should get liposuction first. Because when you do liposuction, it, it inherently, it, it causes trauma to your skin, which stimulates the body's natural response to create scar tissue. Now, when we take all that fat out of you, we can lay this, this belly flat. And so we lay the belly flat, and then we put the garment on in the proper position, and the body, the body will produce scar tissue, which kind of works like glue and sticks things down. So it'll, it'll stick it down. And if you keep it in the right position long enough, then that, that fold goes away. This is right after the procedure. You can still she, see she's still very swollen, um, but you can see the dramatic change. I mean, going from a, I call this the, the SpongeBob SquarePants look to, uh, to this banging body hourglass figure. She's a grandma, by the way. 
really nice lady. She's on the group. Her name's Barbara. Really, really nice lady. Um, can you... Okay, what else? Okay, what is it like during... Okay, we already answered that. Okay, I got blood thinners in my thighs after my mini tummy tuck. Blood thinners. Now, so you, you probably got a blood clot, and then they have you on blood thinners. I, that, that's usually the process, how it goes. Um, so liposuction... Um, there's protocols if you're on blood thinners, there's protocols to get you off the blood thinners for a short period of time where we can do the procedure, then immediately after the procedure, we get you back on a blood thinner. Um, so depending on what your issue is, there's different protocols and different doctors. So your, your, your hematologist or whoever's got you on the blood thinner, um, we'll speak with them and, and just, uh, we'll come up with a plan specific for you. Okay, are you awake during the procedure? Yes, all of the patients are awake during the procedure. Okay, how much can you take um, at the same time? So each of these bottles are two liters. And you can see we got four liters of fat right there. Um, but you know, it's, I think you should really focus on what the results are, potential results are for you as opposed to thinking of how much fat we're gonna get out of you because I don't know how much we're gonna get out of you but I know that we're gonna get I go for the results and then consequently I look over like oh we got a bunch of fat out um, so it's I don't even think about this stuff um, I know you know the patients you guys are thinking about the, the like how much weight am I gonna lose or how much volume I, it's it really doesn't matter none of this that really matters I mean it, it's like a, it's like a trophy you get to hold your fat like yay look at this I got this out but it doesn't matter if you get the if you get the results it doesn't really matter how much fat you got off you know, but afterwards you get to hold the fat, so you know you know we got it off of you, and you'll be able to see it how pretty it is. <laughs> it's really pretty when it's not in you, really pretty. Okay, can I get chin lipo and belly at the same time? Yeah, chin is chin is one of those things you can pretty much add on that with with anything. It's a small area, doesn't require a lot of numbing medication, um, so yeah, we can definitely do that. Rahita. I was awake during my lipo fat transfer. I don't remember much though. Yeah, they, they will, you know, I don't do that. I don't like to give you heavy sedatives. Um, I, I just don't. Uh, there's lots of side effects with those sedatives, lots of problems. And uh, the places that I worked before, we, we were like, we would drug people up, like drug people up. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the way the patients were. I didn't like the complications that they had. And I just, I just decided that um, it would be way safer if we if we do this a different way, and so I I figured out the way that I do it, and I've been doing it for about twelve years now. Seems to work pretty well. Okay, are you hiring? Not at this point. Okay. Um, is there an alternative to lipo? Yeah, you know, and, and the funny thing is, this is an alternative to tummy tuck. There's an alternative to lipo. Uh, you know, tummy tuck is an alternative to lipo. There's also non-surgical treatments, um, you know, radio frequency, there's cool sculpt. None of this, the, none of this stuff is really comparable and they're all different as far as the expectations and the results. So you just gotta do your research and figure out what's right for you. I mean, this is what we can do with liposuction, you know. You gotta make your choice. Okay, can I do my back and arms on the same day? Yeah, so if you go check out our quick quote, Ms. Jackson, uh, the recommendations for the whole upper torso is what we do. So I break it up into thirds. So the upper body, midsection, and lower body. The upper body would include the arms, the underarm, the upper back, and the, and the chin. Usually people have the problem with all those areas. Um, and if you don't want the chin, there's a package for that as well. But and we can hook you up. All right, on Facebook. Yes. He says, I had my VSG on June. Okay. I would love to do a 360 BBL. How long do I have to wait for this procedure? So I want to say VSG is like a weight loss procedure or something like that. Um, it's typically what we'd say six months. Uh, and we get lots of people that get these weight loss procedures and come get liposuction. It's, it's pretty common. Many times they end up like uh, plateauing at some level. And so liposuction can kind of kick them, kick them over the plateau. Do you have any pictures of uh, the compression garments? No, I'm sorry, right, right now we're just showing results. Um, but if you go on our group, the girls talk about compression garments all the time. I don't, you know, compression garments is, uh, is after sucking the fat. That's not, it's not my, uh, not, not my passion. <laughs> you know, I'm passionate about making these results and sucking the fat out. Uh, but the group, the girls talk about that stuff a lot and they have the best uh, recommendations for you. Okay, it will, it will not allow me to do the quick quote for some reason. Um, you refresh the page or try it in a different browser. Okay, where are you located? We're in Vegas. Okay, Pura Vida said, my daughter almost died from lipo. 
it's possible, you know, these, this, there are risks involved, but you know, I've been doing this for 15 years and never had anybody die, not even close, not even close. It's technique, you know, and, and when you do, when, for me, I just do the same thing over and over. I figured out what works and I just do the same thing over and over and over. And I'm not OCD, but with this, I'm OCD as shit. Like, I'm like, I, I am very, very consistent about everything. It's gotta be perfect, perfect. And if you do that, you get consistent results, amazing results, and it's badass. Okay, what do you mean um, if you have constant blooding? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think I said that. Okay, why do some procedures cause for a line uh, day center for the belly? Um, I don't know, why, why do they cause a line on the belly? I'm not sure what you're talking about there. Um, how much of the BBL? Um, so the quick quote, it depends what size you are. Uh, you know, the smaller people, it's gonna be cheaper, but the, typically with a BBL, it's, you're closer to the 8,000 range. Could you do lipo 360 and the arms at the same time? That's too much, especially when you're larger. Even when you're smaller, it's too much because we're limited on how much of the numbing medication we can use. Smaller individuals, you can't use that much numbing medication. So to do a full 360 and the arms, you just, it's, in my opinion, it's, pu it's pushing the limits. It might be possible. You might make it out and might, everything might be okay, but uh, you know, you're, you're taking a risk and I, I don't, personally, I don't want to take the risk. It's, it's not worth it to me. Okay, how much, okay. Could you do lipo 360? Can you move your head? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> All right, you too. Yes. Is it safe for a 62-year-old man? Yes, yes. And, you know, liposuction is not um, gender-oriented. We're showing women because women love to talk about liposuction. Okay, but it's it, the men just don't like to talk about it. <laughs> so fat is fat. It doesn't matter. Your belly is, you know, hopefully you can see some of the people that look similar to you. Uh, but the truth is, is, if you have that that hanging fat, that loose fat, we can get it out. Good. So you know, it, it, it's liposuction is so quick and easy for the chin, neck, and jowl. So I go above the jawline. This is the jowls that you're talking about. You get this stuff here, and then you get this stuff in the neck, and it defines the jawline. And all this stuff down here it creates an oval face. When you fill in in here, you get round face, like a moon face. So you want that elongated uh, oval face, and you want to create the jawline. If you have a problem with your chin, just get it done. It's, it's like, for, we charge 2,500, it's, it's you're in, you're out, but it changes your life. Okay, price per area, we're not charging per area. Yeah. Okay, jowls, okay. Okay, I should not lose more weight so I have enough fat. <laughs> if you're skinny and you want a fat transfer, yeah, you gotta make sure you have enough fat. Okay, can you do that to the arms? Yes, liposuction is liposuction. We suck out fat, and the same thing that happens to the belly happens to the arms. The skin retracts back quite nicely. It's, this is all technique-based, and then we utilize the, uh, the laser for the skin tightening. Okay, we're gonna end this shortly. Um, do you have a uh, recovery house? There is a recovery house here. It's a third party. It's not affiliated with us, but I believe it's like a thousand bucks for three nights, and that includes uh, lymphatic massages. Do you do lipo on the lower pelvis? Yes, in fact, we include it in all of our abdominal procedures because if you have pubic fat, I, I hate leaving that behind. Um, so I just, I just include it because it's there and I wanna get you the best results. Okay, I had a blood clot four years ago. I don't take blood thinners anymore. Can I still have lipo? Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not on blood thinners, you're cool. You're, but it, it, you gotta realize that if you've had a, a blood clot in the past, you're, you're at a higher risk to get a blood clot in the future. Um, so you want to take precautionary things afterwards to ensure that you don't have a blood clot. Is it two liters the max you can take? No, you see patients holding two or three of those. You know, we get out lots of fat. Okay, have you ever done stomach lipo on someone with a fairly large hernia repair mesh? Yes, I have. Um, if it's been repaired, it's not a problem anymore. The repair, uh, the mesh is below the, the fat layer. It's in the muscle layer, so it's not, it's not a problem. The only issue would be is if there's scar tissue from the procedure. I just want to, uh, to be healthy enough so I can exercise and do uh, and not feel out of breath. That's you're you're at the right place. What's up, Stacy? One of our previous patients, Stacy's here answering questions as well. Okay, I'm gonna need a tummy tuck after lipo. I was 317 pounds. Now I'm wow, that's awesome. Now you're 185 pounds. That is amazing. Congratulations. There's so much loose skin. Um, yeah, I mean everybody's different, right? Your story is different than other people's stories. 
Um, if you have fat that you want sucked out, you know, we can do that. Uh, and, and maybe it helps tighten the skin up. You know, I, I don't know your story. I got to see pictures of you to give you an opinion. Okay. One last time. Okay. Where is the group? Oh my God, more questions. <laughs> they just keep popping up. <laughs> Okay, I want lipo, then uh, get a mommy makeover somewhere. Okay, so just realize mommy makeover is whatever a mommy needs. It's, 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 a, it's a term, it's a word. It doesn't mean anything except for what you give it. If you give it meaning, then it's, that's what it means. Mommy makeover, all of these patients are mommies, all of them. So technically this is a mommy makeover, all of them. Okay, look at this, look at all that fat you get out of you. Okay. Okay, do you have openings soon? We do, we do. Like I said, I work really fast, I work really fast. And so when we, when we get booked out, I'm just, I'll just open up new days. Okay, it depends how far out they are, yeah. Okay, all right, happy for you, Stacy says, awesome. Okay, the doctor asked you to lose 15 pounds to be at your ideal weight for surgery it, because they don't know what they're talking about. There's no reason. There's really no reason why you need to lose weight to get liposuction. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why they keep telling people that you have to be your ideal weight. It's, just, it's the same crap and they tell it to everybody. So it's not just you. It's just, I, I think that it's because a doctor has limitations. They have limitations in what they feel comfortable doing. And when they tell you that it's the only, it's the only reason is because that's the only way they feel comfortable. See, I've been doing this a long time on very large patients. We're doing large people, it doesn't matter. Fat is fat to me. We do inner thighs, yes, absolutely. Okay. Instagram says, uh, do you take people who are on Suboxone? Suboxone. I'm trying to think what that is. Yeah. Okay, hernia repair, it's still possible. It's just that the hernia has to be, you know, repaired and out of the way and everything's good. Okay, what happens with your skin if you do lipo on the stomach? Um, you know, you can... Pain reliever. Okay, yeah, absolutely, that's not a problem. Um, so, the, uh, the you can see how the, well the skin tightens up here. You had questions about the, the tightening of the skin or do you need a tummy tuck afterwards and you, just, you simply don't. We also do lipo on the calves and the ankles as well as the knees inner thighs, outer thighs, full thighs, whatever, whatever your problem is, we can, we can work it out for you. Okay. Can you show a man? Let's do that one man before we, uh, we got a one man bod coming up. Okay. How long is the average procedure? They're usually, um, anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours. I, I won't go much longer than three hours. Um, again, I do this really fast, and I, so I can do these big procedures in a really short period of time. Um, yeah, there's our men. And see, uh, if you wanna see uh, this guy. See, men don't send pictures. <laughs> so, and they're not on the group. The group is only women. So unfortunately, we're not able to collect pictures from that standpoint. But uh, absolutely, about men are uh, comprised about 30% of our patients um, and, you know, we can help you for sure. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I got to get running. Uh, I appreciate your time and I'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Thanks for stopping by guys. Miko Chan, Miko Khan. I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys, I know I was like focused on TikTok today, so I apologize. Hey, it's a gastric sleeve. Okay, yeah, the YSG. Cool. All right, thank you guys so much. I'll be back later.